You know, it's not often during these divisive times that we talk about bipartisan legislation, but Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger's new bill, co-authored by a Democrat, would provide millions of dollars in grants to victims of domestic violence. Yeah, Congressman Kinzinger, kind enough to join us this morning live. As we say good morning, Congressman, I want to get to your bill in a moment. But first, you have said publicly that while the president is within his rights to legally challenge the election results, it's time to begin the process of transferring power. I'd argue you and a handful of Republicans have acted courageously, but there are a majority of Republican voters still convinced the election was neither free nor fair. Are you at all concerned, Congressman, that your comments might come back to bite you? No, I mean, look, I, I, I make comments that can come back to bite me all the time. And I think if you're scared of that, you shouldn't be in this job. The problem with people in this job is they're too scared, right? There's a biblical idea that the tired you hold on to your life, the more apt you are to lose it. And I consider the same with politics. So, no, I'm not worried. I just think, look, we have to remind people that, you know, this democracy is bigger than this moment. It's bigger than one man. It's bigger than anything. And if we start getting to where, you know, we just don't accept election results because there's conspiracy theories on the Internet, uh, that bodes very bad for the long term. All right. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the bill that you passed in the House last week. This is a bill that would provide millions of dollars for hospital intervention programs. I want to ask you why you think this legislation was needed now more than ever before. So, look, in the middle of the pandemic, what we're seeing is a higher level of depression. We're seeing a lot more domestic violence. I mean, sadly, if you put people together, you know, we all like to think that, you know, you have a great time. In some cases, this actually leads to people drinking more and more domestic violence, et cetera. And so what we've noticed, especially in Maryland, we saw is if you begin to interdict people in a cycle of violence, so the police or the hospital is able to kind of come and stand alongside somebody that's a victim of repeated domestic violence, uh, you see a lot of a lot of decrease in repeat offenses. And uh, and so this is basically a pilot program to give the resources to start that process. And I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to show a real impact. The bottom line is. You know, violence starts in the heart, and there's really nothing we can do from the government about the heart of people. That's basically the, the core of a conservative philosophy. But if there's areas we can provide resource for interdiction, I think that's the right thing to do. Great job. Yeah, let's bring it back home, Congressman, because as crazy as things are in Washington, down in Springfield, boy, that house seems to be somewhat on fire. House Speaker Mike Madigan continues to deny he's done anything wrong in the ComEd bribery scandal, and yet the government continues to bring strong cases against those in his circle. I just want to ask you yes or no. Should Mike Madigan step down? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And let me say this. The great thing about Springfield is it makes D.C. look highly functional. So <laughs> um, he needs to step down. And quite honestly, he's been in politics longer than I've been alive. It, it's time to roll out. <laughs> All right. I thought you were going to expand, but I think you kind of touched on that there. You know, we had spoken to you in the past about your role in, 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 in keeping America safe. And a lot of people wonder now with the, the switch in administration, how the focus might be on China. What, what do you see for the future when it comes to protecting our, our, our safety, our information out there? Where do you see this going under this administration? So I hope there's not much of a change. You know, unfortunately, the issue of China became partisan. I don't know why it did, though. I probably enough blame to go around. So as the incoming administration looks at this, the understanding the importance of, as you mentioned, our information, the importance of our national security, our allies' national security, I hope there's not going to be much of a difference. Look, we will continue. I will continue. Uh, to hold the government and to hold the president accountable for any bad actions, what I think. But I'm certainly willing to work with him as much as I can. And, you know, whether it's the United States of America, whether it's back to the state of Illinois, we deserve the best. You know, Illinois is an amazing state with a great history that's been pretty ill-led by Mike Madigan. Uh, you just have to look at the budget to see that. Uh, we deserve a lot better, and it's time we do that. Hey, we're out of time, but on a personal note, uh, I know Anita shares my sentiment when we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Can you give the folks at home an idea of what uh, Thanksgiving at the Kinzingers is going to look like? It's not going to be much. We're going to take it pretty easy. I'll probably go, my wife and I will go see my parents, and that's about it. But happy Thanksgiving to you guys, too. Appreciate you. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family time. All right. All right. It's 7 7:20.